All right, guys, let's knock out this review for test 27. Getting towards the end here, 27. Only goes to low 30, so getting close. Um, number one says complete the table of values to five decimal places, which I didn't do right, exactly right, and use the table to estimate the value of the limit. Okay, so I went ahead just to save time and put these in the calculator. Now, let me remind you real quick what I did. I went to Y equals first and punched that in. Once I punched it in, I went to, um, I graphed it. Then I went to second calc, number one, the value, and um, typed in all those numbers for value. You know, my X coordinates, they gave me the Y. A couple of them, I didn't quite go five decimal places. I guess I should read directions, but you can kind of see what's going on as we approach um, two from this side. It's getting closer and closer just to point two, and obviously approaching the same thing from this side, getting closer and closer to point two. So we're going to say the limit is, let me erase that when I wrote it there. The limit's going to equal... 0.2, which by the way is one fifth, but those answers are appropriate. Number two, same thing, except this time you gotta make your own table of values. So because it says it's approaching zero, I went to both sides of zero. I came closer and closer to zero from the negative side, closer and closer to zero from the positive side, and both sides are approaching 0 0.1666. You know, it's approaching this, uh, one, six, 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 keep, and that just keeps repeating. And if you figure out what that is as a fraction, this won't surprise you. It's one sixth. Okay, so that's that's a good answer there. Number three, for the function f whose graph is given, state the value of the quantity if it exists. Okay, this one says, what is the limit of f of x? That graph as x approaches one. And this is gotta be careful here. As x approaches one from the negative side, so that means I'm coming in from the negative side, getting closer and closer to one, which is right there. And if you're looking at as the graph's getting closer and closer to one from that side. The graph's getting closer and closer to two. Now, if you're coming from the right side, it's getting closer and closer to three. But if you're on the left side, definitely getting closer and closer to two. It's approaching two. Number four, use the graph and calculator. Determine if the limit exists. If it does exist, estimate its value to two decimal places. All right, I'm going to do a couple of things here. First of all, I graphed it, and it's kind of hard to tell from the graph exactly what you what you could uh, estimate it to. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a picture of the graph. And there's a picture I got. And it looks like the way the calculator did, there's almost like a little, uh, there's nothing at zero because, obviously, the zero would make that undefined, which you couldn't do, so you can't be that. So then I went to my table set, and I set my table to start at negative uh, 0 0.01 and table change 0 0.001. So I did this. I, I set table start at negative point, point zero 0.01 and table change sorry, at point zero zero one, and I hit second table. And I zoomed in, you know, I kept going, I, I used my arrow key, and what happened on both sides, the numbers kept getting closer and closer. Well, from one side got closer to negative point nine three, and the other side got closer to positive point nine three, which are not the same number. So I'm just gonna say D and E, that limit does not exist. The other thing about that is if you look, really look at the graph here, and look, as I looked at my table, the graph, when it gets close to zero right in this area, is like going above and below the x-axis up and down. So it's giving you weird values, but because of that, if you look at the left side, it's actually below the x-axis close to zero, and if you look at the right side, it's above the x-axis. So they're not approaching the same number there. Pretty good problem. All right, five, six, and seven. I vary the limit if it exists. We're going to use those, uh, some of those special limit rules and laws and things to uh, simplify some of the stuff. So number five, I'm going to break that down like limit. I'm going to break it down into individual terms. Limit as x goes to 4 of 5x squared minus the limit as x approaches 4 of 2x plus the limit as x approaches 4 of 3. Now, anytime you have a constant, the limit of the constant is just a constant. For a number, for the second term there, you can use substitution and just plug in the four and you get eight there. And then same thing for the first one. Technically, you could put the two in the front if you want to, just like, you know, we do with laws. You can always put that exponent in the front like that. Let's make it five X as X approaches four. And if I put the four in there, I'm gonna get five times four, which is 20. So I'm getting two times 20 minus eight plus three. That's 40 minus eight plus three, 30 just 35. So the limit will be 35. And you need to show some steps there. Don't just, you know, don't just write that out real quick in one step. You need to show some steps there that you do know 
with the law of size. So number six, number six, if you have a fraction, we're going to break that into two pieces. So I'm going to say the limit as x approaches two of my numerator, which is x squared minus x plus six over the limit of my denominator as x approaches two of x plus two, just like that. And then, again, we're, we're back where we were a second ago, so I'm going to break that up into individual terms. Limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus limit as x approaches 2 of x plus limit as x approaches 2. I know this is tedious. It's got to hang in there. Uh, over limit as x approaches 2 of x plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 2. And then we can start substituting now. So I can put that... The numerator can go like that's going to be 2 squared minus 2 plus 6. My denominator is going to be 2 plus 2, which gives me 4, four, four minus 2 is 2 plus 6. That's 8 on my numerator and 4 my denominator, which is 2. All right, just like that. Got one more of these. Number 7, same. 7 is just like the one we just did. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to break it into two pieces, the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to say in the limit. As x approaches negative 2 of the whole entire numerator, which is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. That's a terrible cubed. Cubed. There we go. Over the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 5 minus 3x. Same deal. Break it up into individual terms. Uh, x cubed. And the... I'm going to put the, uh, the 2 in the front. 2x... Sorry, two in the front, make it x squared. I think I messed that up on the first problem. Sorry about that. Um, x squared. And then um, minus 1. Again, I know, guys, it's just tedious. There's a reason. There's a method for the madness. Just got to hang in there for a couple of days. Um, negative 2. And put the three in the front of that limit and just put x. So here's what I got. Now I can substitute. If I put, I'm going to have on my numerator negative two cubed plus two times two squared minus one. That's the numerator. The denominator five minus, come on, I ran out of room. Um, five minus three times negative two. So if you start simplifying your numerator, you're going to get negative eight plus eight minus one. My denominator is going to be 5 plus 6, so I'm going to end up with negative 1 over 11 for my limit. And guys, you do need to show some of that work. Sorry to say. Number 8. Number 8 is just the graph. The graph of f and g are given. Using to evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x plus g of f if it exists. If it does not exist, explain why. So I'm going to do both. As x approaches 1 and f, which is this first graph, by the way. I need to change colors. As f gets closer and closer to 1, I'm talking about the x-axis now, the graph, the y is getting closer to is 1. So that's going to be 1. Plus, now look at g of x. g of x, as this gets, as it approaches 1 this way, it's approaching 2. As it's approaching 1 this way, it's approaching 1, which means that does not exist. So 1 plus d, you can't add two things if one of them does not exist. So the whole thing does not exist right there. Number 9. Find the amount of annuity that consists of 10 annual payments of 2000 into an account that pays 16 interest per year. Um, first of all, there's no compounding. That's just awesome. So I'm going to say the payment is 2000 And I'm going to say because it's 1 plus i, and i is just plain old 0 .6, 0 0.06, I'm just going to say 1.06 to the 20th power minus 1 over 0 0.06. I'm going to punch that all in my calc real quick. When I punch that all in, I'm getting, let's see, $73,571.18. I kind of said that weird, but there's the answer right there. Number 10. Number 10 says, find the common ratio, the fifth term, and the nth term. Okay, first of all, common ratio, remember when geometric, the common ratio is the second term over the first. So if you do 8 over 32, that gives you 1 fourth. That's my R. That's the first answer. The fifth term is going to be the first term times r to the fourth power, but if there's no formula. And I could use the third, I could use whichever term I wanted to, but I'm going to use that one. Um, all right, so if I plug that in, I'm going to get, let's see, the first term is 32. r, we already said, was one-fourth to the fourth power. 
I'm just going to punch that straight in my calculator. 32 times 1 fourth to the fourth power. And I'm getting 0.125, but I'm going to change it to a fraction because, you know, that's just kind of what we do. It should be 1 eighth, which it is exactly. And the reason I did a fraction there is because they gave me fractions in there. And then it says the nth term. The nth term, remember, leave the n in. So you put the first term times r, which is 1 fourth, and then n minus 1. You leave the n in. This thing with the equations. So there's three answers there, the r, the fifth term, and the nth term. I think that's all I have on this slide. Last one, number 11, last slide. Write the arithmetic sequence, and I gave it to you right there um, in standard form, and then find. Okay, so standard form is, is what it says right there. So it's going to follow that formula. A n is the first term, which is 15, plus n, n minus 1 times d. You can tell d by looking. It's going down by 2.7, maybe. And if you can't tell that by looking, just do the first term minus the second term. Or actually, it's just, yeah. Actually, hang on one second. I'm glad I just said that because I messed that up. You, you do the second term minus the first term. So to find D, you do the second term minus the first term. So this time is actually negative 2.7. So if I'm going to find the 100 term, I'm going to plug 100 in. 100 minus N for N. 100 minus N is 99 times negative 2.7. So I'm going to punch again. Punch that straight in. I'm going 15 plus parentheses 99, parentheses negative 2.7. And I'm getting negative 252.3. And that time, it's, decimal's fine there because if you look up here, they can have decimals in the problem. Last one, finally, number 12. Going to factor this thing, and I can because the first exponent is twice as big as the second. So I'm going to say that's e to the x minus 2 times e to the x minus 1. So that means e to the x is going to equal 2 or e to the x is going to equal 1. Now, because they're both positive, they're both going to work. To solve that, I'm going to do L on both sides. So I put the... Uh, exponent in the front, exponent in the front. And remember, when you have natural log of E, it's just out of here. So I'm just going to punch in natural log 2 on my calculator. I'm getting 0. 0.6931. I don't even have to punch in um, natural log 1 because anytime you have a 1 there, it's going to be 0. So those are my two solutions right there. You can punch in for fun if you want to, but you're going to get 0. All right, hopefully that helps. Start by a couple mess ups in there. Uh, Hope to see you do great tomorrow like usual, and see you then.